Good morning, y'all. Welcome to my video. Today, I'm going to show you how to create the most simple, easy vector designs that would be perfect for vinyl cutters or screen printers. And we will be focusing entirely on basic one color text designs. For this tutorial, we are going to assume that you already have downloaded and installed the latest version of Inkscape as of January 2018. We're also going to assume that you already understand the difference between vector and raster art and why you would choose to use vector over raster art. So that will not be within the scope of this video and I highly recommend you go and figure that out before watching. Otherwise, this is not really going to make a ton of sense. Anyway, without further delay, let's get started. Here we are with our ink tape, all set up as it is by default. First thing we're going to do, this is optional, but I highly recommend it, is go up to File. We're going to go down to Document Properties. And in this window, we're going to make a couple of changes that are really entirely personal preference. And for me, I'm going to change my display units, first of all, under general here, from millimeters to inches. Most of the art that I make and most of the art that I expect you would be making for vinyl decals or for t-shirt prints, you're probably going to want to be measuring in inches if you're American. You can use whatever you want. Obviously, it doesn't matter as long as you understand it, but millimeters is just not useful for creating a t-shirt design because it's going to be like a bazillion millimeters. Same thing with, with points and centimeters and pixels. Inches just kind of makes more sense for this. Um, along those same lines, we're going to switch from A4 page size to US letter size. That's just your, if you're in the United States, that is just your regular old printer paper size. There's other options, but if you need them, then you probably know what you're looking for. The last thing that I'm going to change is the background. Currently, it is a solid white, which annoys me to no end, because anytime I want to create something that is white, I can't see it. So I like to change the background to the checkered background, which makes it much easier to see not only white objects, but you can see the difference between white objects and transparent objects, which you may use. So that's it. All we have to do now is hit the X at the top. It's closed. And one more thing, again, this is optional, but if you don't want to have to do that every time you start a new document, you go up to File, Save As, and you need to find your Inkscape folder. It's probably going to be under, let's see, it's gonna be in your users. Let's see, okay, let's start from the beginning. Local disk, we're gonna to go to users. We're gonna to go to your username. Then we're going to go to app data. You may have to go into your folder options and make it so that you can see hidden folders. If you don't know how to do that, look it up. It's really easy, but you'll have to do that because this is a hidden folder for some reason. And open that and go to roaming. Why it's buried way down in here, I, I don't know. Then go to inkscape and templates. Okay, I didn't double click it. I did not double click it. Right, there we go. And we're going to call it default.svg, just like this. Spell it out, default.svg. Make sure it says Inkscape SVG and click save. And it will save to your templates folder. For me, I've already done this. So it's telling me I already have one. I'm just gonna hit replace, but you won't have this problem. Okay, so now 
we're ready to get started on some kind of a design. As I said, this is going to be extremely basic and just text-based. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look over here. We have what's called the toolbar. Actually, this is a toolbar as well, but this is the main toolbar. All of these are the things you're going to be using to do things to other things. And we want this one. It's just an A. Or you can press F8 if you don't want to look for it. So you click that A. Get out of your magnifier. Click the A. And then click anywhere on your screen. That, or within the uh, design area. You can click on the artboard if you want. Some people like to work on the artboard. I like to work off to the side and then move it to the artboard when I'm ready because I, I don't like having all the, the lines in my way. So click somewhere in the design space and then you can just start typing whatever, whatever it is that you want your design to say. So lorem and then you can Click back onto the pointer tool up here, or you can press F1 to do the same thing, and then you can move it around. You can you can move it around <laughs> just like that. You can stretch it, make it bigger, smaller, upside down, backwards, whatever. If you stretch the corner, then the height and the width both stretch. If you do the sides, it only stretches the width. If you do the top, it only stretches the height. If you want to make sure that you don't stretch it unevenly, in other words, you want it to stay the ratio of the height to the width to stay the same, you can hold down um, control while you stretch it and the height and the width will always stay in proportion. And same thing when you're moving it around, you can hold down control to constrain it so that it only moves straight back and forth or straight up and down. No like up and over at the same time, which is great if you want to do something like this. Control D to duplicate. And now you have two and you want this to be directly underneath. But if you drag it, see, it's uh, unless you're like really perfect, it's going to be slightly off. But you hold control, and now it just drags straight down. Now, obviously, we don't want it to say the same thing twice. So why did we do this? Well, because it's easier than just doing another text box. To edit this text, all you have to do is, with the pointer tool, just double click it. And now look, you can change the text. So we can press control A to highlight the whole thing, backspace, or you don't really have to hit the backspace. I just start typing whatever else you want it to say. And so we're going to make it say Ipsum because I am just feeling oh so creative today. Now we've got two different words. We could have also done, let's see, control D, control. We could have also done this. Just press, just pressing enter, we could do that. But now they're kind of stuck together. If I want to move that up by itself, it's kind of a pain. It's much easier to do it like this. I can set it wherever I want. And then if I want to make this a different font, I can. Whereas with this, well, I could, I could make that a separate font, but it's just way messier. This is easier, just trust me. So to change the font, when you have this selected and you're in the text editing mode by double clicking on it, you can go up here and let's zoom in. And here's the font, here's the style. So it can be italic, bold, bold, italic, um, size, your spacing between lines. So that would change the space between these two when they're connected together. It doesn't do anything when they're not connected like this. Your um, alignment. So if I want to make sure that they are aligned to the center, then I can go in here, double click it, highlight it, press a line. It didn't really do a whole lot, but if you're if you got a paragraph of text, that would make a big difference. 
So anyway, um, then there's some other things that we'll get to later. So back to the font, say that I want to make this a different font. I can change that. Let's make it poplar. And back to our pointer tool. Let's get out of this magnification. And we're going to stretch this because poplar is a much narrower font. So we're going to stretch it to make it wider. Now, I'm not really happy with this either, so I'm going to change that to, let's say, if you know the name of your font, you can actually just start typing it in up here. I want to use brush script, and there it is, brush script. Now we've got brush script and poplar. Poplar is really similar to um, impact. So now I've got this, and we can just kind of play around with it, figure out how we kind of want these to fit together. Do it like that if we wanted. I really don't like having the bottom line to the left because it kind of looks funny if you're used to reading left to right. But I kind of like it there, but that eye is in the way. But we'll, we'll mess with that later. First, a couple of other things that you can do when you're editing this text. There's um, a couple of things up here. Actually, I'm going to move this up here so we can actually see what we're doing. Get out of the way, magnifier. So I'm just going to edit this one, and I'm going to show you what all these things do. So this one, this is a space between the letters. This is great when you have one big word and a small word on top of each other, you know, or, or vice versa. This way, without stretching it out, you can make the word longer just by increasing the space. And sometimes you just want this because you just like the look of it, having that extra space. This spacing between words. So if you had multiple words, it would increase the space between them. We don't have multiple words here, so I can't really show you the example. Um, then we've got vertical shift. This is only useful if you select one at a time. So you can go up or down, which is completely reversed to how you would expect it by pressing up on the button. It goes down, you press down, and it goes up. I, I don't know why, don't ask me. And then we have the uh, character rotation, which this works whether you have the whole thing selected or just one letter. So say you want one of these letters kind of tilted, like it's fallen off a cliff. You can do that. Or you could even, if you want to be absolutely crazy, if you just want to go nuts, you can just totally mess it up. And you know, I'm going to leave it like that because because we're all crazy in here. Zoom back out. Get that. Get get out of here. And then, okay. So basic controls. I haven't really gone over that yet because, well, I'm not prepared at all. Um, hold down space, and you can move around the um, the d design area. If you hold down control, you can scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. If you don't hold down control, you can scroll up or you can hold down shift and scroll to the sides with the mouse wheel. You can also, if you don't want to hold down space, you can also hold down the mouse wheel button and do the same thing. So those are the basic controls. Um, and then control D duplicates something. If you do it a couple of times, which I did for some reason, then you've got a whole bunch and you can just move them and you have duplicates, which is great because you deserve to be lazy. So working on this is going to be um, just really, really, really ugly. Oh, one other thing. Um, showed you how to do this already, but you also need to know how to rotate it. And this is really easy. So you click on it once and these little arrows pop up, but if you click on it, if you click on it one more time, it changes to rotating arrows. And now you can rotate it. 
So if we put it like this, now we have an interesting effect in that it's the letters are all straight, but it's going up instead. Now if we do the same thing over here, now oh, I have duplicated by accident for some reason, now we can do this. And now it looks like Lorem is climbing the stairs of Ipsum. Great, let's get rid of this, because that's ugly anyway, and we don't need it. And by the way, you can select things by clicking on them. If you want to select more than one thing, you can click on something, hold down shift, and click on something else. Easy peasy. Or if you're even more lazy, you can just click and drag and make this box, let go of it, and you've selected them both. Now, do keep in mind that you can't select them halfway. It doesn't do anything. You have to select the whole thing. Similarly, when you have them both selected, you can hold down shift and click one to deselect it. And now only lorem is selected. Then we can press control Z to undo that because I didn't want it there. I want to put it back. Or if I decide that I did want it there, I can press control Y to send it back where I just put it. Alternatively, there is control Z again for undo and control shift Z for redo. Does the same thing as control Y. The reason why you would do that is because the Y is really far away from control and you have to really stretch your hand to get to it. Now, let's play around with the colors a bit. I set a one color design, but I'm going to show you how the colors work. Down here, you've got a color bar. It's got colors. If you want to change the color, just click on the color you would like it to be. Obviously, if you're doing vinyl, doesn't really matter what color you design in. I usually just design in black and white because when you cut it out, it's going to be whatever color the vinyl is. So, but if you want to know how it's going to look, say you want it to be gold, you can do that. And then if you wanted, you can make this a different color, but we're just going to focus on one color designs. Now, I totally forgot which gold I clicked on. Obviously, those two golds do not match. What do I do? If I click on this, and then I go to this dropper tool. And if your screen is not as big as mine, you may not see some of these tools here at the bottom. There may be some kind of arrows down here. You can click those and it'll expand it and give you a little menu, you know, kind of like that, where you can click dropper. And so if you don't see this dropper button, click the last button to expand it and then click on the word dropper. It'll give you this tool. And then so you've already got this selected. Keep that in mind. You selected it with the pointer tool. Now don't click on this one with the dropper because it won't do anything. Go and click on the one that you want it to match and voila. Now you have two matching words. Let's say I want to edit these letters a little more individually. So what I'm going to do is when I click on this, I'm going to go to this path menu and click object to path. What that's going to do is change it from text. I see now I can double click it and I can't edit it anymore. I cannot change the letters. I can't change the font. I can't do any of those text editing options. So only do this once you're done. And I highly recommend that before you do that, you go ahead and duplicate it and leave a copy off to the side so that if you do mess up and you need to go back, you have a spare. I'm not worried about it myself at the moment. You should be though. Also, save your work. Always save. Save as. And make sure you go out of that. Go and find wherever you want it. Don't bury, don't bury your uh, artwork somewhere within the deep hidden confines of the caves under your computer. Go somewhere simple that you can find. Go to like libraries and uh, your documents. Make yourself a folder for Inkscape. New folder, Inkscape, and then open that folder and save it in there. Give it a nice name, like whatever that tells you what's actually in your design. And for me, it's Lorem Ipsum. Save as an Inkscape SVG, that's fine. 
we'll talk more about uh, other file types in another video. So anyway, back to what we were doing. I was editing these um, letters individually. So what I did was I went to path and I did object path while I had this bunch of letters selected. So now, instead of being text, they are individual objects. And when I double click it, I actually enter the group because it's grouped together right now. So all these three objects are separate, but they're in a group. So whenever I move one, I move them all. Now I want to move just one, so I'm going to double click on the group, and now they're individual objects. And I can move them independently wherever I want. I can put this P up here if I so desired. But we're not going to do that because we're not crazy. What I am going to do is I'm going to select that P, hold down control so that it slides straight up and down with no like random side to side movement. I'm going to move it up just a little bit because I think that looks better. I'm going to do the same thing with this S and then um, with the U. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's what we're going to do and that's what we're going to stick with. I can also edit the size and shape of these things. So say I want to make this M really big for no reason. I can do that. Now say I want to make the U really short. Click on this, turn it into the rotate tools, and I can make this rotate however I want. If I hold down control, it'll rotate in clicks. So it's a little more precise. So I want it to be like that. I'm gonna put it up here. And I'm gonna take my P over here and I'm gonna rotate that as well because I just decided that I'm just mad, absolutely mad today. So I'm gonna click this again and change it back to um, this kind of thing instead of this kind of thing. We've forgotten our math words, that's all right. There we go, and I'm gonna stretch this U, fill in that space there. And this I looks kind of ridiculous now, so I'm just going to do this. And we've accomplished something here. We've definitely designed a thing. And so once when we're in a group, to get back out of it, all we have to do is go off to the side here and double click somewhere random. And now we're out of the group and everything is back grouped together so that you can move it all at once. If you want something to be grouped that isn't already grouped, all you have to do is select both of those things, either by drag selecting with a box or click one, hold shift, click the next one. Now they're both selected. You can go to object and click a uh, group right here. You can also press control G. You can ungroup it by pressing control shift G or clicking it here in the object menu, ungroup. So we're gonna group both of these together. Now, they're stuck together so that we can move them around like that. And there's a very, very, very basic kind of design. Now you know that that is a thing you can do. And so we want to go ahead and See what it looks like on a t-shirt. So we're just going to go online and find a picture of a t-shirt. Just a plain old Gildan 5000 cotton t-shirt. So we picked gold for our colors, so let's do a black t-shirt. We want the front. So I'm just going to copy this. Go back into Inkscape and paste it in there with Control V. Control V to paste. Now we have a problem here, don't we? Because look, our um our words are underneath the shirt. We want them on top. So what we need to do is click on that shirt, go to object, and down here we have raise, lower, 
raise to top and lower to bottom. And even easier, you can just hit page up or page down on your keyboard to raise and lower. Or you can hit home or end to send it to the bottom or send it to the top. We want the t-shirt at the very bottom. Everything should be on top of the t-shirt. We don't need to hide anything under it. So we're just going to lower it to the bottom. We can press end or click here in the menu, lower to bottom. And there we go. Now we need to size this correctly because this is pretty big. Um, we want, we, this is why we changed our, um, our units of measurement to inches because now we can say exactly how big we want this to be. Normally, oh, first we want to do see, look look at those empty space that's for some reason included in the group. We want to go ahead and change this lorem from text into an object. So we're going to go to path, object to path. That got rid of that weird random empty space. So now we're going to double click to get out of the group and then click back on it. And now we have a box that actually shows the edges, not random extra space for no reason. So we're going to make this 11 inches wide because that's pretty, well, let's try 10 inches, 10 inches wide. It's pretty typical of a t-shirt full front design. So we're going to go up here and I'm going to zoom us in again. And we can ignore the X and the Y because it doesn't really help us here. All that does is move it around. We don't, we don't need to do that because we can just do that. What we want is the width and the height. So what we want to do, first of all, is click this little lock button. Because if we don't click that lock button and we try to change the width to 11 inches, it just stretches it out really, really wide. But it doesn't make it taller, so it just looks really stretched and distorted. So we're going to undo that with uh, Control Z here. And we're going to press the lock button. And now we're going to change the width to 11 inches or 10 inches, not, not 110, just 10. And then press enter. And now it's stretched equally in both sides. So we're going to zoom out a bit here. And as you can see, the um, t-shirt is not real life sized. So we're just going to make that, oh, I've done it wrong holding control, we're going to make that bigger to be about the size of an actual t-shirt. Um, you can just try and guess on that because 10 inches on a t-shirt should fill in the center kind of like this. Maybe a little more like that. that. That'll give you kind of an idea of how big it's going to look on your shirt. So there's our design. There's what it looks like on the t-shirt. Zoom back out. Now I'm going to move this shirt and design over to the side over here. And well, we've basically got it figured out. I think we're pretty happy with that. Looks pretty good. Do you like it? I like it. Let's go ahead and duplicate that with a control and D at the same time move the extra one over here, and then we're just going to go ahead and change that back to black because it doesn't really matter what color it is because the color is going to be determined by the ink you use in your screen print or the color of the vinyl that you cut it out of. And so we're just going to make it black because for screen printing we do need it to be black. And we're going to go ahead and export that as an SVG. Um, well, no, we're not going to do that because it's uh, not an export function. We can export a PNG. Let, let's do that. Let's. We don't want to do a PNG, obviously, for our vinyl cut because we just spent all this time making a vector graphic and then we're, that would just convert it to a raster graphic. But say we wanted to send this to somebody to show them what it's going to look like. We're going to we're going to email them this design on the t-shirt just to show them what it's going to look like. So we can select this and go export PNG image. And then this little thing pops up over here. 
we do not want page, we don't want drawing, we don't want custom, we want it to say selection, which is already selected. And we're going to go ahead and just click export as. We want it to go into our documents so that we can find it. We're going to name it something other than G8955, whatever. We're going to call it the Lorem Ipsum shirt. And then I can email that to anybody or I can post it on Facebook and the picture will be there. So let's take a look in our documents. Documentos Inkscape. Um, Epsom. Why is it not? Oh, okay, we have to click export here still. There we go. Now it's exported. And we can open it up. Let's see what it looks like. Paint 3. What the? Get out of here. Let's open that with something else. So right click it, uh, open, open, open with, open with photos. And here it is. That's our t-shirt design. Now we'll just get rid of this for now. What we want to do is we need to, we need to use, we need to keep this as a vector file and send this to our printers or send it to your Cricut design space or silhouette or whatever you use or whoever whoever you need to send it to to get that printed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this black and white or black and transparent I should say. We're going to go to save as and make sure that you do change all of your text from object path before you do this otherwise you're going to have some problems when they try and open it on another computer or just in general if you send this to Cricut it's going to, it, there can be problems and you want to avoid problems so there is one more thing we need to do here and we need to combine these so you probably didn't notice but this is not one object these are separate objects and they actually overlap. You don't want a cut line there when you're doing a vinyl cut. If you're doing a screen print, all that matters is that you don't see a line there. So it's fine for screen printing, but if you're doing vinyl, you need to make sure that these objects are connected together so that when the vinyl cutter cuts it, it doesn't cut them here. You don't want a cut line there. So we're going to just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'm going to select all of these. So click. I'm going to double click in there to get inside the group so that we can select them individually, just like before. Hold shift and select each of them. We're going to go down here to our stroke. Or actually, we'll just go to object, fill and stroke to pull up the fill and stroke toolbox. I'm going to click here on stroke and click solid. And then I'm going to change the stroke color to something you can actually see. So now you can really see where the, the lines are. So we're going to make that stroke smaller because we don't need it gigantic. Just want to just wanna see where those cut lines are. So obviously this is going to be a very ugly cut line. We really, really don't want that. So I'm going to select this, this this and this and again we are just holding down the shift button so that we can select multiple objects at once. We're going to go to path and we're going to click union and now voila the cut lines are gone it's all one object which means you can no longer pick up this E and move it. You're going to move the whole thing at once. Now to get rid of that stroke all you got to do is go back over here to stroke paint and click no paint. We'll talk more about strokes later. For now, just don't worry about it. We'll um, we'll work on the strokes in the next video when we talk about doing multiple colors. So go to File, Save As. We want it to be an SVG. In this case, uh, just to keep things simple, I'm going to go ahead and save it as a plain SVG. That way it won't have any trouble being opened by another program instead of being an Inkscape SVG. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to add the word final to spell it correctly. Final to the end. 
and hit save. And now we've saved it. So if we go back into that folder that we just made, which has disappeared, uh, Inkscape, and we open that up. It's gonna open up in Chrome for me. And okay, so we have a problem. It only exported what was on the artboard. That's no bueno. We wanted to export the entire object. So let's see, what have we done wrong here? Okay, so what we're going to do here is go into File, go to Document Properties, and we're just going to resize this page in the custom size. So where it says custom size here, we're going to click Resize Page to Content. Down here, there's a little bitty plus sign. We're going to click that, and we're just going to say right here, this button, Resize Page to Drawing or Selection. So that's going to make the page the same size as our design. So we can close that, and now it fits within the page. And if we click save, save it as an SVG, either a regular SVG or an Inkscape SVG, honestly, it probably doesn't matter. So we'll save that, replace the existing one, and now we should be able to open that up. And it is correct, it's showing the whole thing. So if we send this to Cricut, or we send this to the screen printers to be burned into a screen, they will have the full image. And this is everything they need. The only other thing that we could talk about is adding registration, but that's a topic for another video entirely when we'll talk about um, print prep. But otherwise, that's it. We're, we're done. We've made a very simple one color text-based design and that's all there is to it. It's really easy. Anybody can do this. You can do this. Next time, we'll talk about doing more than one color. We'll talk about strokes. And eventually, we'll get to things like print prep and registration and more complicated shapes and editing techniques. We'll work with pictures and other things other than just text. But for now, you've got the basic foundation. You can make a really simple and cute little vinyl decal or t-shirt design. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. I'll reply as soon as I can. If it's a really good question or if a lot of people ask the same thing, I'll make a new video for that. If anybody knows Inkscape better than I do and has some tips for me, please do comment. Let me know. If I need to update my video, I will to provide better information for you guys. And that's all. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I know it was very basic, but we got to start somewhere. And, well, it doesn't get easier than this. So y'all have a great night and catch you next time.